Welcome to another edition of Take a Stand TV with your host, Christian apologist, author, and speaker, Eric Barger. You can subscribe to our updates and find Eric online at ericbarger.com. Now, here's Eric Barger. Hello, everybody, and greetings. This is Eric Barger, and this is Take a Stand TV. And I'm glad you decided to stop by this morning. If you're watching on Tuesday morning, you're seeing this live stream. If you're watching sometime later, you're watching uh, video replay. But either way, I'm glad that you're here. This is the third installment of our current series on spiritual warfare from my book, Disarming the Powers of Darkness, and from my new DVD, which is called Defeating Darkness Seven Waves. Uh, I'm out of the studio, obviously uh, this is not the background you normally see, so I'm uh, out of the studio, actually on the road. I was speaking in North Central Washington uh, this past weekend, and uh, speaking at North Shore Bible Church in Manson, Washington. Had a great crowd on uh, Sunday morning and wonderful people, and even today was able to spend time with... Um, with Pastor Craig and a couple of the folks from that church. So we've had a great time over here. I do travel back to the Seattle area this afternoon, and I will do the replay of Take a Stand TV this evening from our studio at home. But I am in a hotel room over in North Central Washington and uh, live streaming from there this morning. Uh, by the way, Melanie is home and she is improving. I'm kind of looking at my notes over here if you're curious what I'm doing, but uh, she is home and uh, she is improving. It's going to be a slow improve, a slow boat to get her back to normal, but um, we've learned a lot through this ordeal she's had with her lower back. Uh, it was as much pain as I've ever seen anybody be in, and I gave a special report about it last week and talked about her role in the ministry and how important she is uh, not only to me personally but also to uh, the success of the ministry. She's been such a, a driving force from kind of behind the scenes. Uh, all these years, and I love her and appreciate her very much. She's my office manager. She's my researcher. She's my best friend. Of course, she's my wife, so I uh, continue to pray for her. And if you'd like to see the uh, update that I gave last week, uh, it is on YouTube, and of course, it was also in last week's live streaming as well, but you can go in and see what's going on with her, what was going on with her. Uh, it's some really excruciating pain she was in, but um, we think we have some answers that will keep that from happening uh, as a regular thing in the future. I certainly hope so anyway. And anybody who's ever had back pain, you know that. I've had my own share, and uh, this was uh, extremely bad. So I appreciate your continued prayers for her and for me and for the ministry, of course, too. Now, uh, let's get on to our series about spiritual warfare from my book, Disarming the Powers of Darkness, and the live DVD that I mentioned a few minutes ago. And with teaching like this, I believe it's helpful to remind people of uh, what we've done in the past. And so I, th I think it gets everybody up to speed and gets everybody on the same page. And so uh, what I've done is put together some excerpts from week one and week two and we'll go ahead and play those for you here in just a second. And by the way, if you missed either of those um, uh, weeks, if you didn't see the live streaming or didn't see the, the replay on YouTube or at our website where you can watch those, uh, all of Take a Stand TV, all the episodes at our website, then um, uh, we're going to play a couple of these excerpts. And you can always go and watch the entire episode to get the teaching in context uh, at either, like I said, our website or at our YouTube channel. So in the first program, I defined our terms, what we were talking about when we use the word spiritual warfare, and I set some groundwork. And in the second program, I gave the, the most crucial weapon that we have at our disposal in spiritual warfare. Now, it was only weapon number one of seven that I'm going to give. And, uh, you know, somebody once told me, you know, you could probably give 70 weapons. And I went, yeah, we probably could. And we could have this series last forever and ever and ever. But uh, uh, we'll, we'll give um, uh, weapons number two and three. Pardon my phone for going off, but that's live. That's the way live TV works. Uh, we'll give weapons number two and three during this particular program, as well as get you caught up for what we were doing uh, in weapon or in uh, uh, the first or and second installment.
if we're going to win in spiritual warfare, let's learn where the war is not. It is not against flesh and blood. This isn't a war that's fought on battlefields with guns and tanks and knives and planes and bullets. This is a war fought in the spirit realm against Satan's forces. It is a spiritual battle. Ephesians chapter 6 makes that very clear. The Bible is clear about the fact that we're in this war as well. People, when they first hear me, they, they, they want to say, well, I mean, I've never heard this before, and I've been around a lot of churches, and, and you're telling me that I'm in a spiritual war. Well, how do you know that I'm in a spiritual war, Eric? Well, take a look at just these three scriptures. Why would the book of Jude in verse 3 tell us to contend for the faith once for all delivered to the saints? Earnestly contend for the faith. Why would we have to contend for it if there wasn't a war against it? So contending for the faith. And the outcome of these spiritual battles is directly related to our desire and understanding of what it means to be an overcomer through Christ's authority in us because it has nothing to do with me and everything to do with him. You see, all I am is an ambassador. And an ambassador goes and he delivers the message for the one who has sent him. When our president installs ambassadors in different countries, let's say Canada, for example, when our ambassador to Canada goes to Canada and sets his foot on Canadian soil, I mean, he gets off the plane there at Ottawa, Ontario, most likely, at that point in time, he has say over the affairs of our country inside the country of Canada unless and until our president comes and stands on Canadian soil. Well, you and I are ambassadors for the kingdom of God, and until Jesus comes and sets his foot on the Mount of Olives, guess who is supposed to be overseeing the affairs of the kingdom of God here on earth? And it just doesn't say those who are called to be pastors or evangelists or teachers. It's calling all of us to be people who are ambassadors for the kingdom of God wherever we go, reflecting the truth in an honorable way of who we serve and who we stand for. Weapon number one, without weapon number one, there is no faith, there is no victory, there is no authority, there are no ambassadors, there is no conquering. Because weapon number one is your full understanding of what happened at the cross. And the number one thing that happened at the cross was when Jesus shed his blood. As we deal with spiritual warfare, obviously uh, you've already heard from me that I think the blood is the most uh, a powerful weapon that we have at our disposal. So we want to take some time here and just talk about the Exodus 12 story. It is a type and shadow of uh, things to come. And when we understand types and shadows in the Old Testament, it shows us a New Testament truth, but it's in a veil, if you will. And uh, this is one that, that is very, very clear because uh, the blood of a spotless lamb was to be taken and put on the, the uh, lentil, the side post and the door post of the house uh, in Egypt that the death angel, when he would fly over, would then not visit the house. You're going to see that scripture in just a second. So Exodus 12 is a very important passage uh, in our study of spiritual warfare. Uh, here in Exodus 12, verse 13, it says, And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are, and when I, this is God speaking here, when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. Now, this is good news for us, folks, because really what this is saying to us, if we understand this Old Testament passage and understand, of course, the New Testament reality of Jesus Christ and what his blood was all about and what happened at Calvary when he shed his blood, most of us have a concept of that, but do we really understand the depth of what happened in the shedding of the blood? If we understand this passage, then we understand that where the blood has been applied, the devil, his powers are limited. He cannot operate the same way where that blood has been applied. It hampers him. Now moving along a little bit here in Exodus 12. Exodus 12 verse 22, And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop, and dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lentil and two side posts with the blood that is in the basin, and none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. Now, they were to take the blood of a spotless lamb. Each house was to, to, was to slay a spotless lamb. And they were to put the, the hyssop stalk into that blood, and they were to use it to paint the upper door post and the side posts of the door. 
And uh, this is what God's prescription was. Now, what if they would have decided, enough of this blood business, we don't need to do that, we're going to do it some other way. Well, then the death angel would have come and visited their households. Uh, they needed to follow God's prescription. Now, this is true with us in so many other different areas of our lives. We need to follow the prescription that God has given us in his word and not go off to do our own thing and decide that we want to do it some other way. Just now I'm reminded of one of the Old Testament kings in the Northern Kingdom who decided he would build uh, a holy of holies, uh, one that he, his people wouldn't have to travel down to Jerusalem three times a year. They could go there and offer sacrifice. He was trying to do something, I believe, for his own selfish interests to keep his people there uh, close by so that as, as his subjects, they would do what he wanted them to do. But it wasn't doing it God's way. It wasn't going to Jerusalem. It wasn't coming to bring the, the offering of time and also the sacrifice to the temple back in the Old Testament days. We've got to follow God's prescription. If we apply the blood and if we stay obediently in Jesus Christ, and those are questions for each of us, if we will follow what the Word of God says, stay obedient to Him, if we'll do those things, this is what happens. The blood, we will understand, is the most powerful spiritual weapon. Once Jesus went to the cross, that was the demarcation line between death and life, as I mentioned in the DVD teaching. And uh, once that happened, the, the de demons and the devil himself have got to know that their time is short. Uh, number five, and perhaps the worst reason that churches are afraid to deal with this, is they don't want any demonic disruption to take place because it might give their church a bad name in the community where they live. Now, Paul would say to them in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, he would say they treated God's wisdom for the foolish ideas and the thinking of this world. There is freedom in Jesus Christ. No matter what you've done, no matter what's happened in your life, there's freedom in Jesus Christ. You can be delivered and you can be free and you can be forgiven for anything that's taken place at any time in your life. Trust me, as a drug addict and an alcoholic and a, a rock musician and a new ager for all those years and following the path I was on, I know what it's like to be forgiven for a whole lot. And so there's freedom and there's power and it's available to us. And uh, you know, this is uh, what you gotta understand that the blood of Jesus is powerful. In fact, that was the night that I've always gone back to and thought about that the blood of Jesus, the most powerful weapon, because it's the thing that Satan is most afraid of. I believe it is the single weapon he is most in fear of if it's being applied by a Christian who knows his authority uh, in Jesus Christ. So there is our recap from week one and two in the series here we're doing on spiritual warfare. And now let's continue to pick up from the video from the DVD teaching, Defeating Darkness Seven Ways, on the seven different tools we have or weapons that we can use in winning the battle to see captives set free. I'll be back in just a few minutes. So, the blood must be applied. Jesus died on the cross. We apply it with asking him to save us, change us, and forgive us. It is a weapon of spiritual warfare. It is the demarcation line between death and life, between heaven and hell, between eternity and a great place and a terrible place. But we've got to stay obediently in Jesus to have full effect from that blood. Now, I also found it interesting in the study of this that in David's famous repentance psalm, in Psalm 51, verse 7, 
It says, cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean as he cries out to God. Cleanse me with hyssop. Well, hyssop doesn't have any cleansing properties. I studied this out. I looked at it. I discussed it with others. I talked to a Messianic Jewish friend of mine about this. Hyssop can't do any, I mean, it doesn't cleanse, not in the way the blood does. But David says, cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. I also find it interesting that when we talk about the application of the blood, that so few Christians understand the applying of the blood. You see, the sponge of vinegar that was put up to Jesus' lips on the cross, do you know it was held up on a hyssop stalk? So from the exodus to David's prayer of repentance to the cross, the hyssop was in play. So what is our hyssop today? What is our hyssop today? By the way, as soon as the, the, the sponge touched Jesus' lips, what did he say? He said, it is finished. It was, it was finished, completed. And by the way, at that point, the devil muttered, I am finished. <laughs> Which, of course, should be heartening for all of us. So how do we apply that blood today? This is how we do it. We speak the principles of God's word. We speak about the cross. We talk about the cross. We talk about what happened when God saved us and changed us. We give testimony of God's word being true. We testify each day by using the word of God without being religious. You know, I use the King James Version to speak from, and it's what I write with also. I think it's the most reliable of the versions, but that's, that's a whole different thing. When I'm talking to people in the everyday life, I want to be able to make the word of God real and palatable, and I want to be able to get through the hardness in their hearts. And if I use the principles of God's word, I don't have to recognize that it came from Colossians chapter 2. I can use the principles of God's word in such a way that it is a sharp and powerful two-edged sword to those people. And so we need to speak the principles of God's word. Now, this is a great example. These are futuristic Old Testament saints. I'm sorry, New Testament saints. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Now, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. It wasn't just one. It wasn't just the other. It was the two. But when you mix the two together, do you know what happens when nitro meets glycerin? That's what happens in the spirit realm when we testify to the power of the blood of the cross. Let's never leave the blood out of a discussion of the cross. It was his blood that's the demarcation line, like I said a minute ago. Look at this next verse. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And the next thing that happens is they overcame him. Whenever the Bible tells me how the saints overcame the enemy, I want to listen to that. I want to find out. I want to make that a practice and a privilege I have in my life to be able to do that. Our words have got to line up with God's word and we need to be speaking the principles of God. There's so much more to be said about this, but maybe I, I should answer the question, why? Why do we want to do that? Well, Jesus taught us how to overcome the enemy by speaking to him. In the desert, Jesus said, it is written, it is written, it is written. When he was in the wilderness and being tempted, three times Jesus said, it is written. Also, Satan can't read your mind. So if you don't tell him what you know, he won't know who you are in Christ. He won't know your authority. He doesn't know the attributes of God. He can't read our minds. He doesn't know what's going on in our hearts. The only way he knows what's going on inside us is when he hears us say something or watches us act in a particular way. Let's not give him a foothold to operate in. Amen? Amen. Satan doesn't know our thoughts. We have to speak it out. I, I know there are a lot of people say, oh, you shouldn't talk to the devil. I had a pastor tell me that one time. And I said, well, Bill, that was a long time ago, by the way. I said, Bill, if I don't tell him, he won't know what I believe and what I think. He looked at me, he didn't have an answer back. He just thought it wasn't, it wasn't the right thing to do to speak to the enemy. Now, I don't want to carry out long, drawn-out conversations with demons. I think they ought to leave quickly and quietly without a big display, amen? But when I tell them who I am in Jesus Christ, not because I'm something special, just because I'm one of his redeemed who said yes to salvation, and I'm one of his who understand the authority, and I don't walk in ignorance, I don't know everything yet, not about this topic or any other, but I'm working on learning as much as I can on this. 
been talking about this 20 some years and I can tell you this stuff I'm giving you this morning it works I can tell you from personal testimony this works weapon number three whole reams have been written about prayer you know I believe prayer is the key to discern if someone is really a Christian or not the only thing that really tells us whether someone is a real live bona fide Christian is what their prayer life is like I hope your prayer life is in five minutes followed by a nap because you didn't have a plan when you got started. That's why Jesus gave us a plan to pray with in Matthew chapter 6. I used to think the Lord's Prayer is only 30 seconds long if I was going to speak it, but there's a lot to pray with there once you understand it. it. changed my life when I learned about it. It'll change yours too. Prayer is a key. Well, if you just tuned in, this is Eric Barger, and this is Take a Stand TV. Thanks for joining us. And we're in the midst of our series on spiritual warfare from my book, Disarming the Powers of Darkness. This has been the third installment. Of course, you can see the other installments, one and two, and all of our other videos at ericbarger.com and, of course, our YouTube channel as well. Now, uh, we will try to get this particular program posted on YouTube the, in the archive and at ericbarger.com by noon tomorrow, Pacific time. That's the plan anyway. And uh, we'll do our very best to get it up there so that you can share it with other folks and see it again. Now, I want to comment on something I said at the end of the teaching that was taken from the DVD that you just saw. Um, when people say that, you know, I, I know this is good because it works, I always want to qualify exactly what that means and how come it works. Um, New Agers and occultists would often uh, ver give verification or would give validity to uh, some of the techniques they use just because they get results. But just because something works doesn't make it right. It certainly doesn't make it godly. For you and I as Christians, we believe that something uh, from the Bible, if we employ it in our lives, if we employ the teaching, if we follow what it says, well, we give glory to God and say, yes, it works. And when I make the statement that, folks, this stuff works, well, it does because it comes right from God's Word. It shouldn't baffle us that it actually works because uh, God's Word is true and it's, it's good for what it says. And, and so it's different with the world. It's certainly different with those that are in other uh, belief systems or religions, such as New Age and occultism and Satanism and so on. Because, yeah, what they do, some of what they do works. But you have to ask yourself the, the question, by what spirit is it working? That is the, the real key. So with that said, listen, I will uh, see you again next week. Uh, remember to let us know where in the world you're watching. I appreciate folks who comment on Facebook. And of course, we can see if you tell us where you're watching from, what state or what country, then uh, we'll know. But you can always write at ericbarger.com. Just find the email Eric button and you'll be able to... Uh, uh, email me and I'll see all those the comment boxes at the bottom I'll read all those and you can you can send messages along that way uh, also uh, the and and most importantly as I close just want to remind you that wherever you are and where whenever you have an opportunity this week remember to take your stand for Jesus Christ you know he is the answer for the whole world he is what the new agers are looking for they just don't know it he's what the occultists want but they really don't know it. And so we need to introduce the truth of Jesus Christ and who he is, the risen living Savior, to a lost and dying world and make stands for him each and every day if we can at all. And so wherever you get an opportunity, whenever it's available to you, take your stand for Jesus Christ. I'll see you next Tuesday morning at 10 Pacific or next Tuesday night at 7 for the replay. And of course, at ericbarger.com along the way. God bless you. Have a great week. I'll see you then. Each week, be sure and watch Eric Barger live on Take a Stand TV. Find Eric Barger streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, and via the Live Stream Network. You can access the complete archives of Eric's Take a Stand TV episodes and other videos at our YouTube channel and ericbarger.com. Just search for Eric Barger and be sure to tune in each week.
Did you know that the work of Eric Barger and Take a Stand Ministries is completely funded by your gifts and offerings? We encourage you to take part and support the ministry. Please visit ericbarger.com and click this button to contribute and please do it today. Every gift is appreciated, both large and small, and we need your help. Thank you for taking a stand with us. Thanks for joining us for Take a Stand TV with Eric Barger. We welcome your comments and questions. Please visit us at ericbarger.com. Be sure to tell a friend and please join us again for more Take a Stand TV with Eric Barger.